Well, come. Well, come. <laughs> come on in, y'all. Sound is available. And Wisdom Wednesday is preparing to begin. The sweetest of all lovers is John. Big ups. As we like to get rolling here on every Wisdom Wednesday, we're giving thanks for the moment, for the now. Giving thanks for all ancestors known and unknown. Let's get ready to stay in tune. We're going to tune in on the Wednesday of Operation. This is where we use our mind to journey a little bit further in enlightening moments through conversation. So we'd like to get started with a little sound um, bath so that we can set the space. The space requires our attention and our manifesting power. So we're going to do that and use that. How we doing out here today? We're going to take about another minute prior to getting our sound bath going. Let people come on in the room. But when we begin our conversation, we shall begin. Have my brother, my fraternal brother, but a brother who I've chosen, Kimo Tuck, will be signing in today to add enlightenment to our conversation on the wisdom of emotions. We all have them. And we all use them. So in this time, let's get comfortable in the moment for another Wisdom Wednesday. And I'm going to bring the music down and we're going to sound bath ourselves into the moment. I say.
know. You hear these symbols, we're getting close to getting back to our conversation. As we hear a few more of these, allow yourself to breathe into a high potential of what can be understood of emotions as we discuss the wisdom of emotions. And one more with our highest intention in total. Remember, these bells connect to dimensions, so place your intention there. Breathe it in and let it fly. Ah, sure. All right. We have made it to another space here. All right, we're at another Wisdom Wednesday space. Peace, my brother Keem Hotel. Be able to join on in, request to join. We're going to get this conversation going here on this Wisdom Wednesday. Today's energy is going to begin with the wisdom of emotions. Bringing my brother Kimo Tep in the in the groove. Peace, my brother. How you doing today? Doing great, bro. Yeah, oh yeah, I can hear you very well. Hey, hey, peace and blessings. Oh yeah, man. It's a hey, it's something that all of our light workers and those who do the shadow work as well can come and converse upon the findings, the the discoveries of knowing. And where that tra traverses us today in this galaxy of life is the wisdom of emotions. The wisdom of emotions. So, uh, jumping right in, my brother, when I think about uh, the wisdom of emotions, last week we discussed how the one split itself into two. And that is shown in so many ways. Now, when I think of emotion, the other side of the street is logic. So you have the polarity of emotion and logic. Now, maybe logic will be for another day, and maybe we'll use that to juxtapose our standards of emotion. But emotion and logic are that two that we contain that we deal with in uh, energetic mentality. Okay, brother. Yeah, man. That, that emotion really kind of is that driving force mm -hmm. behind, behind the logic, you know, behind the thought. Mm. You know, uh, yeah, we're going to dig into it. So if, that makes me think that if everything is as above, so below, then if the split of the one went into a generating force of uh, feminine and masculine energy, which is used to generate all of this electromagnetism that we're in, this split, the split of the logic and the emotion has to have the same sentiment. And to me, emotion is the darker, more primordial energy of the two. I believe that that, that darker, more primordial is connected to the feminine energy, which is, it seems to be older, seems to be more of a uh, primordial force than even the masculine force, even though they come together. It's almost like in the simultaneous split, the feminine energy and or the emotional energy and or the darkness is older than the light. And so that's what makes me think, like you said, the logic is driven by the emotion. Wow, that's why it's, that's why it's, uh, the word etymology is such. It is it is energy in motion, emotion. Emotion, you know what I'm saying? Um, and just the whole vibration of it. Mm -hmm. it's, the same as motion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the presence of emotional energy definitely is is a presence, and it'll take over a logical situation. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, even just thinking about my own experiences and my own life, you know, emotion. 
emotion is what drives a lot of my difference, a lot of my patterns, a lot of my behaviors. You, know you and me both. I mean, like you just mentioned that, the first thing I thought about is nostalgia. The things that we do to capture nostalgia at times. The things that we do to revisit a moment in our Akashic record through a sense, through a, a taste, through a sound, through a place. It it, it, emo, it induces, it then will induce an emotion. Cause and effect. It's, it's, it's literally the, I was going to bring that up too because it's the literal, like, universal law of uh, not just cause and effect, but vibration. Yeah. Because every, everything is in motion, nothing is at rest. That's why I truly believe it's something that resonates on a, a atomic and some atomic level. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it has to be on, I think it's, it may be on every level. Yep. <laughs> you know that that baseball as it's leaving your hand and traveling to the bat. You know, and then of course you can translate it to plants and animals. Yeah. And but you know, what about the mountain? I, and I, I definitely tap into that. Yeah, that that emotion. I connect to ge uh, geologically the mountain with my stature. I seem to uh, connect to that reflected. Uh, landform or the f form of our planet and so I can tap into yeah I'm pretty sure that thing has an emotional complex to it even though it just seems like a static mountain Absolutely. it's energy and motion even with that mountain Did it make a sound? Mm -hmm. I love that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that makes me think about even I, I had wrote. Uh, yeah, and being able to honor that that it it has a perspective and a uh, is energy and motion as well. It makes me think about uh, I wrote a poem one time about how the fields miss us. Meaning the fields where we used to do all of our agriculture based off forests even. They miss us in that we had a connection going on regardless of the situation while we were being enslaved. There was a uh, there was a connection of energy and motion between us beings who were working and tilling and, and being connected in this with this land daily to now we don't really deal with agriculture. We have people who do at home agriculture, but we talk about in mass that is a true connection with the planet. That the, there's an emotion that we've lost right there that we need to regain. This is more for commerce and you know production and you know efficiency as opposed to really balance and nature and nurture. You know, balance. Um, I mean, oh yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, that's first, man. Fatherhood first. So that's a good thought. The balance. So even though we saying. Uh, emotion probably is older than logic. How do we balance the two? How do we balance emotion and logic? Because we can live in a world where one can take over, and now we're living in imbalance, and now that's not fruitful for everybody around. If we're balanced, it can be fruitful for most. Now, what helps me? Go ahead. What helps me with in the balance of emotion, and depending on what your light energy is, you'll be more apt to bringing those emotions to the surface on your countenance and on your vessel than other light energies. And so me being someone who can actually feel and is not ashamed to feel, emotions are so powerful that they can overcome logic. Emotions don't care about logic. They don't care. Emotions, if we want to break it down uh, into our brain matter, that emotions is said to be that right brain connected to your left body. So all of my right-handed people, that's your not as strong side that's your more emotional side. That's your more emotional brain presence that 
to balance it, at times you need to understand the higher power you have to even detach. But what are some of your things you do or some of the thoughts you have when it comes to balancing emotion I and logic? Say, the moments that I've had where emotion has either taken over or overcame me, mm-hmm. I've been It's stillness, yeah. Yeah. Hey, life is life, man. Hey, it's good to be out in nature. Yeah. But I like that, the effort and the intention. is really standing on the fact that we're not an absolute one type of being. We are all. <laughs> so those emotions are in that same form. who are able to tap into emotion in public. Those are the ones who stand out. Those are the ones who, if they're in their craft, in their bag, that emotion will come out and it actually draws more to them. It's, it, and it becomes polarizing because emotions are, you know, they, they don't fit in anybody's bag in the moment. So they are polarizing. It's a love-hate thing. There's no in-between. You use logic to find that balance. But like we said, sometimes there are no words for an emotion. It's right. It's the right side of our brain. The right side of our brain isn't about words. It's about the wholeness. It's about the in, the entirety of it all. And it's a vibration. It's really an unseen thing. You know, it has moments where you can see it, but it's really a, it's a vibration type. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll have a moment, and then next thing you know, somebody will look at you a certain type of way, and you that emotion will change based on the vibration. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Last point, 
I'm thinking about, you know, the artists and the creators that, you know, we seem to you know, acknowledge and really invest in. Yeah. You know, how to use that social. Brother, shouts out to him. More love, more power to, to, to Brother DMX and Dark Man X. Oh, yeah, yeah. For his right now. And, like, you know, in a time where hip hop is really kind of switching over to being more commercial. He brought a very like a, a true dogmatic, serious star system energy to the game that it was like a masculine emotion. It, yeah, that was ninety seven, ninety eight. I mean, yeah. And, and just to jump on that, brother, I ain't going to lie. Not saying that this brother's going to have the same fate, but the type of takeover musically with that energy that I'm being reminded of right now in the game is Burner Boy. Burner Boy's ability to be fully himself and like be against the grain in, in visual appearance and countenance and what he stands for reminds me of DMX and, and just that, that type of masculinity that's alpha. And I'm in the music game. I'm not nowhere near wavering to something that I'm not. I'm fully this, and I'm going to extend all the limits that this that I am, and just really take over the game. <laughs> Cause DMX took over the game like that. I remember that, and so he and he and he took that respect, and so I felt like he was coming from an emotional center that an alpha male has and is able to emote on the track. Okay. And so continuing on, when, when we think about wisdom of emotions, so we, we have, uh, anatomically, we have certain organs that function better in certain vibrations. We know the brain is our logic center. We know the brain will figure out how to do it, logically, go. But the heart is the first thing that's being developed in that vessel. The heart has more magnetism. The heart is earlier in the development process. Seemingly, we, our people and our culture and antiquity has always connected the emotions with the heart. Or the, the heart was the original brain, basically. And when we say the heart was the original brain, the emotional center is to be the anchor to the logic center, not the other way around. Peace, uh, goddess, Candace Christina in the house. What's going on? The, 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 the heart is our emotional center, which is our first brain. It's more primordial. So the heart is really supposed to lead the brain. The heart is supposed to have a feeling that it desires, and our brain is supposed to say, go, go logically help me find out how to do that. Yes, it does. So, so life is more emotional than logic in the sense of before, like, one had to come first. The brain doesn't come before the heart in development. The heart comes before the brain. And so what I feel like we're in an a inverse situation in our, uh, in our society where we have a lot of imagery, a lot of imagery that is placed before our eyes, which actually takes in into our brain, but it actually changes our logic a little bit. What you consider logical starts to shift based off what you have been in tune with visually, then that alters then how your brain and your heart relationship goes. Absolutely. You'll start to have your brain logically tell your heart, don't feel like that. It's not right to feel like that, heart. What are you doing? I was going to say, that's a frequency. That's like a closed heart. Yeah. Because you, know, like, you do have to exercise the emotional center of your brain. Yeah. Because you have to exercise that, whether you do it through situations or meditatively, you know what I'm saying? And, and I believe... Definitely meditatively. depends on your frequency, and that's why the heart is important, even, you know, from, from, from all time spiritually, it represents something that's, you know, almost on another level. Yeah, it's, it's beyond... Yeah. 
So there you go. There's a connection right there. Uh, yeah. 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 Keep your heart pure. How do you keep your heart pure? How do you keep your heart light as a feather if all of our funerary texts and our afterlife uh, metronetzer or hieroglyphics for those presenting this ultimate judgment where your heart is placed on a scale and a feather is on the other scale of bottom and they have to equal. Your heart basically has to equal the weight of a feather. How do we achieve that emotionally? How do we emotionally offload all the weight on our hearts. I would say there's a tuning. It takes work. Like like I said, it's a frequency type thing because they say your heart has to be light. You know what I'm saying? Like I think light is another word for like frequency. You know what I'm saying? And subtle. That frequency the feather means that it's able to tap into higher realms. Yeah, like it's nothing. Emotion in itself that 
prevents my heart from becoming light as a feather. Because now I'm holding on to something that I'm, I'm vexed by. And I offer that vexed energy to others who want to tap in to that particular issue. So that is something I feel that the ego does to prevent a, a growth situation. And like we're saying, growth in our situation is actually unloading the matters of the heart. Actually not, they say a true creator, a true God doesn't exist in time. So how are we dealing with the past so much? We deal with the past too much. And we should move forward into the future. Really, the more energy that we put into processing past events, we're nixing ourselves for the manifestation of ability ahead. They always say the best athletes are the ones who have the shortest memory. You might have beat me on the last play, but I got you on this play. And so we should always be on this play, not the last play. We can look at the last play for knowing how to prolong life, but let's not look at the last play of our lives to hold on to and to increase the weight of our heart because remember our ancient our ancestors made sure to understand that this whole life thing you want to do all these situations live and meet all these people do all these manifesting but you don't want to take none of this with you <laughs> you want your heart you want your heart to be just as, as light as a feather meaning you're not vexed or there's nothing holding down your emotional vibration that would allow you to fly so emotions Versus logic. And it's not even verses. They're just uh, two parts of the one. It is. It's, 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 a, it's the duality of everything that, that you know, causes us to, to create. Because emotions... Oh, man, you said something right there. Emotions cause us to create. I mean, yeah. It's emotions Absolutely. that cause us to create, not logic. That's why I say it's the energy in motion. You even got nothing to say here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like, That's that shadow work, y'all. Embrace it. So, to go into that shadow work, bro. It's not like you talk about shadow work. Mm. So those individual emotional situations build to a whole. So emotional chapters to a book, for example, of your life. Mm. Oh yeah, I remember those feelings vividly. That's a spread across the board, you know, for everybody. Yeah. Even people that didn't know was just like, wow. Man. Yeah. And then you listen, then you start listening to his music. Then you start listening to his yeah. interviews. Talk about it. Then you continue to feel a whole other type of way. And then emotionally, you're kind of caused to, or led to a collective. Mm. Of those emotions, because those those emotions that we were received were the effect to allow us to create new causes. Yeah, same thing happens, you know, on the flip end when when you see Burner Boy, you know, performing for for what was this the the uh, what was that for the Grammys? Grammys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> MJ gonna be on the next one, y'all. <laughs> Yeah. And like listen to albums, what he's talking about, it helps you feel a certain type of way. You know what I'm saying? It does. I, DMX. Even with his his, 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 his this music is diverse from like being able to like get you in the club, but also being able to help you feel in a certain type of way, like spiritually, you know, see spit some of the illest prayers. Yeah. Know, on wax and you feel that. You know, like it draws you in. And so, so that you know, feeling, like, yeah. Like, 
everybody's kind of going through this thread of what we're feeling right now because he's also attached to us as, as, as children. Yeah. Like we were brought up. Yeah. You know, in our lives. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, when you come, when you say uh, emotion, that's about feeling. And you, you talk about logic, that's about thinking. I remember Mr. Miyagi, one of those Eastern philosophers in those movies said, don't think, feel. So don't think about stuff so much. Feel what that shit feels like. Like when you just sit and feel with something, you don't need any words. Just sit in it. Like you said, the stillness is the opposite of the energy in motion or the emotion. So if you want to truly exer- observe an emotion, sit still in it. Go have that moment of introspection, asking yourself questions while you're in it. Well, why, mm, why does this hurt so bad? Or mm, why do I feel so good with this? Mm, have I ever felt like this before? These are the introspective moments. That allow, I mean, honestly, introspection is the, the gateway to shadow work. What questions are we asking ourselves that are allowing us to reveal things that are right there, but we haven't took the time to feel our way through them? And introspection is the, is the act of detachment in real time. It's like, as I introspect, I'm not this body. I'm this overmind controlling this body. Like, hey, why do you feel like that? What? So if I'm if I'm asking myself that from some other frequency, I'm both of them. I'm the ability to, to go through the emotion, and I can analyze the emotion. I was gonna say you can analyze it. So if you had that gift, you should be willing, and you should intentionally put yourself in someone else's emotions. That is an open heart chakra right there. That is the the you to know, me that is when your heart chakra is open. Mm. You know, I think when, when we close off, like you said, an open heart chakra, we close ourselves off when we're, we're put, when we put in situations that will challenge us and, and literally teach us about our own emotions. Whereas if you're more willing to sit back and learn from the emotions of others, it's, it's kind of like you can kind of use that as you, you know, create that as fuel and, and literally, especially when you come from gratitude. Yes, coming from gratitude in that action, that has a world of possibilities. You come from a different frequency. You come from a place of love instead of a place of hurt or a place of fear, you know, or a place of misunderstanding. You know, it, it gives you an opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to, yeah. to heal. More than anything, yeah, it's healing in that, in this whole action is where it's the road to the healing. So when you, when we exchange hearts for one another, that's the that's true empathy. I don't have to go through the experience, but if I take on the the, the matter of your heart into my own heart, I should be able to feel what you're dealing with, brother. I should be able to tap into the emotion that may come up if I'm in that situation, which should allow me to be more of a a human to a human. Yeah. Yeah, they only in the root and their whole lifestyle is living in the root. They don't even know all that other type all other type of lifestyle that's above that. The heart is halfway between heaven and earth. If you stay in the heart, you can be in the cosmos all day long, but you can still be effective down here on earth. It's not to be so enlightened and uh, ascending so much so that you're still not effective on this earth. Hence why you're here. You're here to be in motion. That's the ass is up in motion. When you just in your head and your thoughts and into, you know, whatever you in. Some people just either be playing video games or, you know, watching sports all day. It's more to life than just what you're stuck on. Yeah. What you, you know, and if focus is on others or if your focus is, is on the healing, you know what I'm saying? Because healing is holistic. It's whole, it's like, that's the circle. That's like, if, if it's 360 degrees, we're not healed until we can put a chunk in every part of that circle and it, it's a whole road that never ends. 
That's the holistic yeah. aspect of healing. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And so if, if you're tapping into that, if, you, if that is the driving force, you know, it, it's inevitable, you know, that the frequencies kind of guide you to that life, to that, mm. that situation. It's like once you make yourself, uh, yeah, once you open yourself up, what you say now? It's undeniable, like, you mentioned how, yeah, you mentioned how these brothers like DMX, Burner Boy, the, the, the vanguard artists who are able to almost use, not almost, they use bridge as a, they use music as a medium and bridge to transfer emotions. Like, I'm not just sending you a message, I'm not just sending you a vibe, I'm sending you my emotion. Those who capture that and vibrate with that tend to think, oh, I pay anything to go to this this guy's concert. That's how much I need to be in the building type type situation, that, that influence. So we talked about how logic is the masculine energy, which is electrifying. Oh, you can wow people with your smarts. But the most influential energy is that of your emotions. You can draw people to you with your emotions. Your emotions are what gives you that magnetism. That makes things magnetic, whether it's a feeling you're looking to get that comes up in an emotion and then your brain says, okay, do this step, go talk to this person, go buy this, and now you have that feeling. Emotions are magnetic. So if the, the, if the feeling of joy is within you, your brain is going to give you so many different ways to go accomplish that joy. If, you truly, if that's the emotion that you are truly uh, tuned in to get, the brain is supposed to come and electrify the moment and say, hey, this is the algorithm to that end. You want some joy? Brain, think it up. Blah, 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 blah. You know, the brain moves faster than light. Joy. <laughs> here, here you go. Here's joy. Just go do it. Because <laughs> then you have to just be brave and courageous to go do it. Yeah, bro. Huh? And, and Karen. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Nah, he's... He, He's going for emotions in real time, brother. He's a, he is the lesson. The the children are the lesson. They are showing us the young God form without any without any any boundaries. <laughs> the, the thing about parenting is about setting the boundary that's going to keep them going, versus uh, <clears throat> and setting a boundary to where it doesn't look like a boundary. I see. You know what I mean? Making it seem like. The expiration could go on forever, but of course, you you say when we go into the house. <laughs> but yeah, brother, it's, if we remain in the heart, that means we're halfway between heaven and earth. That means if heaven is a state of mind and heaven is a place on earth, heaven is within us. Heaven is an emotion, possibly. I believe heaven is, a, is an emotion that can be vibrated towards in a moment. And so can hell. hell all, all these terms of what is good and bad as far as state of being is both within us. Heaven and hell. Heaven is what I consider the highest positive emotion that you could possibly be in the state of being of. And you can experience that in your mind, in meditation, in music, in, in interpersonal relationship. These are all opportunities for generating not only that emotion, but having an exp exponential type of emotion. So what about a group emotion? So we talked about we talked about the emotion of the individual. What, what, what do you what do you tap into when it comes to group the collective emotion? You mentioned when Nipsey when Nipsey Hussle died, that was a collective emotion. Amplify, yes. Individual, you know, we're being led to kind of be 
isolated, we've isolated ourselves, even with our we're building here, I think it's the value and what we're doing and how we kind of translate to the masses. But um, this is something, you know, we should be doing on the everyday in the streets, in our homes, with, you know, people closest to us. It's a lifestyle. Uh, Lover just mentioned uh, collective consciousness moves the needle. I agree. And when we say consciousness, I think inside of consciousness is emotions and logic. I think the the one is consciousness. The one split itself into two called emotions and logic for us to have an experience down this month. I was going to say, it's absolutely just an experience because um, when you say I agree. Emotions, when you're talking about the collective tapping in on the same frequency and really kind of building, you know. That's what we're building up to, y'all. Newsflash. All of this that we are involving ourselves in is the road to building up the collective consciousness, the collective emotion, because we just spoke of how powerful that is in comparison. So, of course, we want the most powerful entities on on our side. When you talk about energy in motion and polarity, you're talking about an artist like Future, somebody who you either love or you hate this guy. So, such as the greatest ones. The greatest ones are polarizing. There is no middle ground. When you're great, there is no middle ground. Either you're going to be on this side of a great one or you're going to be on that side. Because that's how great they are that there's no lukewarm aspect about them. You got to pick a side because they're definitive in their passion and they don't stop. So, yes, brother, I tap into Future. People be like, you still? Yes, I still listen to Future because he... To me, But he, he knows how to transfer emotion. You're going to transfer that passion. And and you know that future, this guy got this guy got lyrics that he doesn't even, he's not even saying a word. But why am I over here getting crunk through that passion? How, how does he do that? He's not saying nothing, but I feel a passion in there. And I, it was, I, don't, I haven't heard nothing like it like since it came out. So once a week, I turn on some future. Sorry, y'all. I know it could be. Balance is all of it. <laughs> Absolutely. But I mean, he, his method of, of, of emotion and how he's created his music has led to others to pretty much building off of that and doing the same thing. You know, uh, shoot Gunna. Gunna, Young Thug, all the guys who came after him, definitely, you have to sprinkle some of that future uh, sauce. You see, that's an emotion that if you want to uh, analyze that emotion, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of the lower chakras as far as root, sacral, solar plexus. You know, um, future may have a few subject matters that are uh, above that, but he mainly stays in what his particular lifestyle has generated the emotion of. And hence, me, I'm someone who came from humble beginnings, so I can connect to some of those humble beginning emotions. Um, the trauma into the music. So he, the trauma that he deals with comes into the music, but that trauma generates an emotion. And so we cannot say that any emotion is good or bad. It just is. No emotion is good or bad. It just is. It is. And logically, we understand what 
So when we, when we use our minds to break down music, for example, we can see the lyrics. We know logically things that are not fruitful or not. And we, and we understand that. But then there's a, a conversation about the, the intonation. The, t the tone that is transferred is like humans feel emotion through tone, which is another vibration. Like when somebody mentions a certain response, you can tell right there how sincere they are by the register of that first word or two's tone. Hey, be like, hey, you want to go to the, uh, hey, you mind coming to the store with me? Sure, man. Most of the time it's like, eh. But it's like, okay, yeah, let's do that. You know, the, the tone will give you the emotion that the come from is coming from. And there you go. You, you talking about your 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 reflection? And you better say it the right way. You better go into yourself, deal with that emotion, fix it up, and emote it out in a way that doesn't alarm the queen, the the asset netrex, because she is in tune with the emotional center of the home. Yeah. I think helps us, you know, experience those emotions. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because far too often brothers and, and young men try to get, you know, be closed off from the beauty of life and be hard and rugged and basically. The biggest gift for an uh, alpha type male, you consider yourself an alpha alpha male, I, I I I challenge you and I offer you openness. Instant emotion. Yeah. But you, y'all were intentional about that because at one time there weren't any pictures, but then there were. That's the thing about us. There's a balance that in the home, the 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 the, the feminine the feminine energy is the heart. In now she has both, and he has both. So both of us have both. Fashioned that that queen that that wife. She is the emotional heart. That masculine energy usually is that brain that's logically helping that heart get the feeling that it desires, so that we can have a happy home. See, the emotional fuel from the queen goes to the, the masculine energy of the, the husband, and he's like the high energy, high logic, high algorithmic mentality to put things in motion, to move the pieces on the physical chessboard so that the heart of the home achieves an emotion that pushes us forward. And I always say that our wives, our, our significant others who are in that feminine energy are the antennas of the universe. Now, we are too. We all are the same, but there are different levels. Like if this was a game and we had like a little uh, meter on all of our different skill sets, emotional intuition is, is a feminine energy and is longer and older than the masculine energy. So, hey, what can I say? If we serve that emotion in our homes, we usually end up with a great uh, resemblance of a modern day empire or tribe, one that everybody has their skill set, specialization of our labor, and we're able to push and advance us forward as well as the youth and the fruits of that labor. And that's another thing we just tapped into, brother. Them, them emotions, intuition is connected to emotions than it is to logic. 
Like, I'll get an intuitive moment, don't have any words, but it's like, hold up. Oh, it, it all is, brother. This this thing is all open, man. Right? Yeah, yeah, we think. Yeah, we be thinking we so old. Just, yeah. From the jump. That's it. Hey, well, honey, David, hey, a woman's intuition, and we all get it from a woman. So, hey, it's probably home there first before we even get a piece of it as men. We get a little piece of it. I can only imagine the feminine vessel, the type of messaging and signals y'all get from out of nowhere, and it's just like, light bulb. What the? Like, it's almost like y'all got some other system that's like a, it's like a notification system. Like, you know, your phone has these notification systems. The feminine vessel got all type of notification systems, man. Hey, man, I don't know what you want to call it, man. It's, it's, it's the extra thing that we ain't getting. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll stop trying to take the extra. Look, man. Um, no, brother. The woman is just, she's she, she, why do you think the queen piece in chess can do so many moves? Why do you think that? The queen is the original piece. So it's like when you fall in line in natural order, you're able to get a better seat at the table, honestly. When you're a man who knows how to serve the feminine energy in a way that is serving with dignity, you get a better seat at the table, man. Now, if you come out here and want to fight, you want to come out here and want to fight the feminine energy, you want to Put it down, control it, possess it. Hey, when you try hard, that's when you die hard. When you find your way how to use your potent, high energy, masculine energy to serve the emotional goal of that feminine force in your home, shit, you start to create an infinity cycle then. You start to create infinity. You start to create infinity and then all the fruits of that labor... Uh, get the benefits of infinity as well. Uh, it's beautiful. That intuition, man. Like, you're, if, if you're open as a man, that woman's intuition can save you. It can. Absolutely. If you, you know, remain closed and that right. bridge is available through her, yeah, that's an opportunity right there. Go ahead. I'm saying, so I'm finding ourselves either relying on my team or, you know, our own ego. To, to really like be, be open to that emotion, to that frequency of you know just balance, man. Because our women, our women are there to to, to help lead us and help lead them. You know, yeah, I think it's, a give and it's it's a both. We both leading and, and following each other. Find, you know, we all have to find our value. You know, even on, on, on a momentary basis. You know, as a, as a man, I, I even think as you lead. Observant, observant. Because you see how ego, ego and logic be needing a reason. Yeah, I did it for this reason. Like, yeah, yeah, I got a reason to do this, man. It's logical. It makes sense. See, I'm gonna do it like this, but it's like the emotion comes in. It's like. It don't have any explanation. It don't have a description. It just comes in and just starts to change the situation. And energy in motion is in motion for a reason. <laughs> it's here to be shared. It's here to be transferred and communicated. And especially when we're talking about positive vibration. Mm -hmm. So when we stop that flow, we're stopping universal flow then being closed. If we're being closed to our woman's emotions then we're stopping universal flow. So that's like if you're holding on to something so much, if you don't open your hand up, how are you going to ever receive something else? Like how are you going to receive something else, strong man, if you're so closed that you can't open back up? So then you don't stop and you don't create a dam. Like It's like damming up a river or something. You don't, you don't stop the flow. This thing's supposed to flow and, and provi provide life to all those along the riverbank. 
Yeah, and but see, ego is that strength energy. It's like, like physical strength. Like I'm here to move the pieces of the physical planet. Hence why. If we understand our vessel differences, the strength that we have is to move the pieces based off an emotional goal. We're not moving pieces just to move pieces, y'all. We're looking for a feeling. Like, if you remove all the shit, what is the feeling you're looking to get to? I'm looking to get to some fulfillment, some joy, some shit grooving. <laughs> I'm, those are the emotions that my life is in search for. And as I truly desire it with gratitude, and so it is. And we're all being led by higher entities, y'all. Understand that. We're all being led by higher forms uh, that, whether they're ancestors, whether they're higher conscious beings that you're connected to and don't even know it. They have a hand in your life. Your life matters. And, uh, you know, it, this life wouldn't be the same without you. Like, it, Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And emotions are kind of like updates. Mm. You know, they bring they bring your software to a different paradigm, but you still the program is designed to do what it's designed to do. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. No matter what. I mean, even, even if you kind of get you know off track, it's still like you will know, run yourself right. You know, trying to do something that you're not supposed to do. Yeah. You know, it'll 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 literally mess with your uh, a whole emotional state. Uh, yeah, and emotions. Yeah, it's hard to move with the with the wrong emotion on you. Emotions are like the tools of the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's, it's like nature, bro. It's, it's gonna keep it's gonna keep doing what it do, bro. Oh yeah, it's perpetual. It's it's not to be it's not to be stopped or contained. It's limitless. It has no boundaries, and it's easy to observe. It doesn't give a bunch of explanation. Emotion just is. Now, logic is going to say, hey, I'll give you a time, place, this, that, be there. That's logic. Emotion just show up on your front door. see emotions is like eyes. Your eyes can show emotions. Your eyes are good gateways to an emotional state of being. And then body language. Exactly. I was going to say, bro, just even if you're blind, bro, you can feel emotion. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's a feeling. You, We have an intelligence to feel that. And that's why the heart has that big uh, magnetism uh, around it. Like most of our, yeah, our, our aura field is mostly generated from the heart. So the heart needs to feel. And it don't need all these words, y'all. Hence why abstract art can give you an emotion. It don't look like nothing unless it looks like something to someone. Then it's going to induce an emotion out of you. Like, wow, I want to. Make a, I want to make a action to, you know, do whatever this emotion has just caused me to feel. And so music is a form of art. Art is a form of art. And so these don't have to give a description for you to take them and consume them. They're beyond words. Uh, I, I, I think we, we live in art, bro. Oh, we do, man. I love the regionality. I love how art seems to inspire from different regions. It's a cultural thing. 
And maybe that's nature doing that. Maybe it's the nature in that region. Hey, and I will say, I had some of that today. It's vegan by Shalanda going up. creating things and you will find new emotions get get into building and manifesting things you'll get into a new emotion like take on the challenge of hmm I want to learn how to cook a new something I want to learn how to paint a new something that right there will start a emotion lookup or a search within your being <laughs> like how do I want to feel first before you start to do anything how do I want to feel And bingo. So, all of my people who think too much, the stillness of meditation, the stillness of just breathing, just telling yourself, inhale, exhale. And don't think about anything but that. Do that for 20 breaths and see how you feel on the other yeah. side of that stillness. That's, 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 what, that's the cheat code of life right there. Literally, that's the cheat. If you can just focus on... Some, it, Nobody ever taught us how to breathe, y'all. That reset, just, that moment of just kind of like, I think that's really the fuel that you need, you know, especially when you combine that with, you know, that emotional fuel that's driving you towards that that moment or that, that goal or that, that creation that you, 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 you're manifesting. And that's, that's, that's being brought about. Yeah. You know, Yeah, it, it is stillness, and there's power in stillness. It is. It is. It's an emotion that you're coming from because every every love making session isn't even the same emotion. It's timeless. Yeah, emotions are timeless. It all starts in the mind. We have to be, like you said, the fuel. And that's what, you know, even in, in what I do and deal with in the sacred sounds, I'm looking to e e uh, educe emotional feelings. It's not logic that I'm dealing with with these sounds. It's all emotional. It's the actual, it's the, it's the come from that I'm looking to affect with you, which is the emotional energy, the emotional fuel, and sacred instruments made out of natural elements are going to give your body sounds and vibrations that it's most in tune with. Which is gonna give you emo which is gonna alter your emotional fuel center. Bro, some of the first no, not even some. All of the first instruments came from nature. Hey. I say. But then I say to our nature. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and look at those energies you you put together. The goat and the tree. Is a tool, and you know that it's going to affect emotion holders around it for as long as it is holistically able to do what it does. Like my brother, in in being able to procure these instruments, it took on a whole new emotional fuel that I'm looking to now continuously and consistently present. It's like my fuel changed. I saw a new possibility through the emotion that they gave me, but that I could transfer to others. I'm like, oh, if I feel like this with them, I could transfer this to them. Service, man, because 
of you as well so when we wake up and we set in motion the ritual of the day that's once again that logical being knowing how to get the emotional goal that the the ultimate emotional center of the home would be propelled into their day we already know how to do that we just got to get our ass up and do it and be consistent with it as masculine masculine driven forces and so to continue to be that force, we we observe that sun energy because it's consistent, it's authoritative, it's electric, it provides energy, it don't ask no shit, it be there on time, boom, it's consistent. You know, we have aspects of the moon as well, but we see that that nature of that moon more than that emotion. And so, hey, setting the standard of the day through ritual in the morning of the home, I, I've taken that on as something that I enjoy to do. I like to get up, check check all the windows. Uh, light the incense, get some music playing in the rising, meditate in the rising, stretch and do yoga in the rising. Then we go out into the world and do business and commerce with all you fine people. Lifestyle, holistic health, herbs, different things. 
things like that. So, um, you know, big things are coming on this way. Stop. Stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned in, literally. It's all about the tune and the frequency, y'all. And these Wisdom Wednesdays are a middle of the week. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing. While you're in the vibration, you must fight to stay in it. You don't let anyone or anything take you out of your vibration that you desire and that you enjoy to be in emotionally. That's your job. Whenever you allow somebody to give you the route out of your optimal vibration... Hey, it's up for you to see why you allowed that to happen and knowing you use the tools to get back there. I was going to say, you know, because they help us create our own emotions. You know, it's the bulls out here led by his emotions. You lead your own emotions. Mm. And you, you, you can use your emotions to, to manifest and create situations for yourself. That sounds like a god. Exactly. <laughs> that's what we are, y'all. So that's what we are. We striving to be like our oldest ancestor, the creator. So, I appreciate you, my brother, King Motel, one more again. Hey, Wisdom Wednesday, the wisdom of emotions. Everybody who tapped in, y'all, stay on this, on this groove. It's going to continue, you know, and we're going to continue to do the work to ensure that our hearts are light as a feather. Hey, Jovial Joel here at Jovial Joel Soundspot. Peace and love, my brother, power. Until the next one.